Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, it is a moonlit summer night. Not quite full moon, but it is one beautiful moonlit summer night. And I will say we are in summer because it is now Thursday, June 1st, 2023. Oh, let the uh, shenanigans begin here. Uh, in the summer of 2023, which I kicked off by, as I mentioned in another video, I celebrated the first day of summer 2023 by ripping the solar panels off of my tiny house and returning them to Amazon.com where I bought them. So anyway, goodbye solar panels. Hello, global industrial civilization, but uh, now that I'm back home, I can go over here to the mainstream media news and finding a subject here on the mainstream media today that uh, I've touched upon this subject. We're going to talk about global dimming, um, which I'm kind of on the fence about, but of course, Nowhere mentioned in the article about global dimming is is that the whole subject of global dimming and <coughs> particulate pollution and climate change and heat spikes are all a direct result of too many people on the planet. <coughs> so we are going to get our overpopulation quote of the day to kick off this rant about global dimming. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I've heard of this fellow. I don't really know much about him. But let's listen to physicist Max Born. Max Born who died in 1970 when uh, the population of this planet, probably, what, a third of, I'm sure, less than half of where it is today. So this is what the physicists were sounding like uh, 50, 60 years ago. Quote, <clears throat> Science and technology will then follow their tendency to rapid expansion in an exponential fashion until saturation sets in. But that does not necessarily imply an increase of wealth, still less of happiness, as long as the number of people increases at the same rate, and with it, their need for food and energy. At this point, the technological problems of the atom touch social problems such as birth control and the just distribution of goods. <clears throat> there will be hard fighting about these problems. There will be hard fighting about the just distribution of goods. <clears throat> was the physicist Max Born's prediction, I guess, about when I was being born myself. Okay, but we're going to, let's hear from Helen Keller. Uh, Helen Keller, there you go, author, activist, and lecturer who, we lost Helen in 1968. She was quite the character. What is Helen Keller? I don't think Helen was a breeder, but I don't know that for sure. Quote, Once it was necessary that the people should multiply and be fruitful if the race was to survive, but now to preserve the race, meaning the human race, but now to preserve the human race, it is necessary that people hold back the power of propagation. Hold back the power 
of propagation. Uh, good luck on that, Helen. Okay, and with that, I see my computer has eaten the uh, story. Uh, let's try to find this here about global dimming. I'm sure, if, you know, anybody in the Doomosphere already has their mind made up on what side of the fence they are about global dimming, uh, but I actually am on the fence. I am on the fence. Uh, you know, generally, I mean, we'll talk about it in the article, but the, the argument being <clears throat> that, you know, all of this particulate matter, all of basically all of this air pollution that humanity has been throwing up in the air for the past 10,000 years or so, particularly the past couple of hundred, that it is actually keeping the planet cool. We're throwing so much of this garbage up into the atmosphere now that is actually reflecting the sunlight back. And if we are successful and getting rid of the particulate pollution, it could actually make temperatures spike because we're getting rid of, of basically unintentional geoengineering. It was this unintentional solar radiation management is what it is. It's a, an unintentional byproduct of global industrial civilization. Ironically, is helping to preserve global industrial civilization by keep by keeping the sun out, and uh, I don't know. I just place this whole global dimming thing. I've seen the video and read the stories. My own position on this, as if my position is any more important than your position or anyone else's, is that you know global dimming is just one more ingredient in the stew, uh, I think on, you know, looking at the top, I don't know, thousand threats facing this planet, I would put global dimming down near 999 probably. And uh, so, you know, I, being a, a journalist and, uh, understanding this thing called source credibility. The only uh, time I have really interviewed anybody about this, and you might be able to find the interview that I had here, not the main interview I had with Tim Garrett. With uh, Tim Garrett is an atmospheric astrophysicist, an atmospheric physicist at the University of, of Utah. And you should listen to the full interview, but I did a short interview with him in 2020. And I think this is when we brought this up. And it might not have even been when I was recording it that I was just talking to Tim. He is an atmospheric physicist. So I would, I would think if anybody would, uh, would have an intelligent thought about global dimming, it would be Tim Garrett, and unless he's changed his mind in the last three years, you know, I brought up the subject to him, and he laughed it off as, as a complete fear-mongering joke. The man uh, devotes his entire life to atmospheric physics <clears throat> and, and, and said... It, 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 it's not even, you, you know, the statistically, marginally, whatever that word is, it, it's, just, it, it's just not relevant. Uh, we're, we're talking such a tiny uh, effect. He, he completely uh, blew it off, and since I have a lot of respect, for uh, Tim Garrett, who knows a hell of a lot more about atmospheric physics than I do, uh, I, I generally throw in 
with with Tim Garrett. Uh, but who knows? I could be wrong, but I guess James Hansen uh, is not agreeing with, and I also have a lot of respect for James Hansen. And uh, so Jim Hansen, I guess, is part of this new report, um, you know, raising the alarm level. Anyway, take it away. This is from The Hill. Climate paradox emission cuts could unmask deadly face of climate change, scientists warn. So we're looking at the climate paradox. Uh, I was going to say something, but I'm going to hit the edit button. Anyway, <clears throat> scientists have uncovered a potentially lethal paradox at the heart of efforts to slow human-caused climate change, a series of new studies suggest a stark truth. On the one hand, cutting fossil fuel pollution is necessary for avoiding severe destruction over the long term, but such cuts will make the Earth much hotter in the short term. Unless you're Tim Garrett, I guess. One recent study cast the well-known decline in air pollution during the corona panic in a darker light. These cuts remain one of the only examples of successful cuts to climate warming pollution, but the new study found that those corona panic era cuts and air pollution led to a rise in global temperatures. The findings published yesterday in the journal NPJ Climate and Atmospheric Science unveil a stark paradox at the heart of human-caused climate change. It suggests that while cutting fossil fuel pollution is necessary, for avoiding severe destruction over the long term, such cuts will make things noticeably worse in the short term. The pandemic era economic slowdown led to, quote, a large scale geophysical experiment, study leader Orhan Gustafsson of Stockholm University said, that's because the shuttered factories and power plants led to a corresponding crash in emissions. Even so, not all emissions fell in the same way. From a research station in the Maldives, an island archipelago off the coast of India, Gustafson's team detected that when pollution from smokestacks fell, so did the concentration of aerosols, those tiny floating particles that hang in the atmosphere. Well, obviously. Uh, that fall was an unmistakable boon to public health. According to our world and data, these contaminants, like tiny floating particles of soot or sulfates cause millions of global deaths per year. But for all the damage they do to human lungs, aerosols also help shade the earth by scattering light particles from the sun that would otherwise warm the planet. After the cuts, the study found that light reaching the surface increased by 7%, said Gustafson. While the sky became bluer and the air cleaner, climate warming increased when these cooling air particles were removed. While aerosol concentrations fell as the smokestack shut off, other gases remained stubbornly high. In particular, levels of the most potent climate warming gases, like carbon dioxide, barely changed. 
Carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases warm the planet by trapping heat. The combination of more heat hitting the same amount of carbon dioxide meant a straightforward rise in temperatures. The sudden rise in temperatures led by the pandemic reduction is a stark example of a more general problem, one that has long haunted the drive to cut air pollution. A new draft study by Columbia University climate scientist James Hansen suggests that the recent rise in temperatures does not come from greenhouse gases at all. Huh. This would, uh, so in a Columbia University study, Hansen suggests that the recent rise in temperature does not come from greenhouse gases at all, but from the reduction in sulfate aerosol since the early 2000s. Hansen is has an ex esteemed pedigree on this issue. He is the former NASA scientist who in 1988 warned Congress about the dangers posed by burning fossil fuels, uh, blah, blah, blah. But by 2021, Hansen was troubled. The earth was warming too fast. In part, that was because the U.S. and world governments had largely ignored his calls to cut carbon emissions. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels increased by more than 40% between 1990 and 2021. But even that surge in CO2 levels was not enough to account for how fast the climate was warming Hansen and fellow scientists Makiko Sato warned in 2021 when they wrote, quote, something is going on in addition to greenhouse warming. Their culprit, the fact that the immediate aerosols released by fossil fuels temporarily hid their worst impacts, meaning that cutting them would make things worse before it made them better. The two warned that declines in aerosols could lead the rate of global warming to double by 2040. And last week, Hansen and his colleagues reiterated those concerns. Under current emission reduction policies, they predict rapid warming. And this has nothing to do with El Nino and all of that. Average temperatures increase, according to this new thing that Hansen's involved with, quote, will likely pierce the one and a half C ceiling in the 2020s and two C before 2050. One co author on the paper pointed to another troubling natural experiment of the Corona Panic era, the sudden surge in temperatures above ocean shipping lanes that were suddenly devoid of ships. Uh, this is climate, I love this, climate entrepreneur Leon Simons Quote, for decades, this area, you know, these big shipping lanes, has been kept relatively cool by sulfur emissions from ships. But this changed in 2020. More extreme weather is likely. Not all climate scientists accept Hansen's and companies' inclusions. All right, here is good old Michael Mann. What does Michael Mann have to say? We have a little a kerfuffle forming between Michael Mann and James Hansen. Uh, according to Mann, quote, I have nothing but respect and reverence for James Hansen, but I think he is wrong on this one. 
and I guess Tim Garrett would team up with Michael Mann. So does this mean that I am going with Michael Mann instead of James Hansen? Ha, huh, I have to I have to sleep on that one. But Mann said they did agree on something important. We don't understand the Earth's atmosphere as well as we need to, quote, and where there is uncertainty, we should weigh in on the side of precaution. Yep. Like the larger threat of climate change, this threat has loomed for a long time. The thorny, double-edged relationship between aerosol and carbon dioxide emissions is something Hansen has warned of as early as 1990. In their 2021 paper, Sato and Hansen described the problem that the longer we burn fossil fuels, then the hotter it becomes when we finally stop, not simply in practical terms, but moral ones. Their point was not subtle. The paper was, titled, was subtitled, Faustian Payment Comes Due, about the legendary doctor who makes a deadly deal with the devil in exchange for an enviable life, at least for a while. But there was one difference they noted in their paper, quote, Dr. Faustus had to pay the debt himself. We have willed it to our children and grandchildren. So there you go, guys. Just put a global dimming in the collapse pie. All right, little dog, did you handle that rant? And with that, I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, I'm gonna go sit out in the porch of my now solar panel free tiny house and look at this beautiful moon and listen to the frogs on this gorgeous summer night while I still can. Bye guys.